Today our Bible reading is taken from the book of Romans and the 8th chapter. Just going to read the last few verses of Romans chapter 8. And if you have a copy of God's Word near at hand, you might want to lift it there and open it and follow along with us. Or maybe lift it at some other time and study these words for yourself. Romans chapter 8, the last few verses of the chapter. The Apostle Paul asks this question. Romans 8 verse 35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. In all these things we are more than conquerors. I wonder today are you living a victorious Christian life. One of the great tragedies is that the church in the West is so self-indulgent, so self-sufficient, so self-seeking, so self-satisfied and so self-willed and we don't really know what it is even to defeat the nature, the sin nature, the flesh that is within us. And yet down through history there have been many, many godly men and women who knew and loved the Saviour who didn't have the same privileges and liberties that we have and yet live victorious Christian lives. I think especially of one Christian that I heard about from China, Pastor George Chen. Many years ago he testified of his experiences of persecution in China before a congregation here in Abbot's Cross in Northern Ireland. And he told the story of being put into a a Chinese concentration camp for his faith in Christ. He was a pastor, he loved the Lord, he wanted to spread the gospel. And the authorities, the communistic authorities, wanted to crush him, to silence him, and to break his spirit, but they were unable to do that. And in order to try to crush him, one of the things that they did was they sent them down every day to shovel human excrement out of the cesspit. Life expectancy of somebody in that situation was something like six months. Hepatitis or some other disease would almost certainly creep in. And if that didn't happen, the person's spirit would be broken and they would ultimately renounce their faith if they weren't strong. But Pastor Chen, can you imagine it going down into that cesspit from morning to dusk and shoveling human waste, the stench, the heat, the smell, the unhealthy conditions. And yet such were the conditions that the prison guards wouldn't go anywhere near him whenever he was there. And he used that situation to become a sanctuary where he would pray and sing and worship the God of heaven. And he got peace alone in that cesspit to spend time with his Savior. And strange to say that he would often sing that old hymn as he was there, I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. He walks with me, he talks with me, he tells me that I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I find that amazing, I find that remarkable. That's what it is to live in victory. Awful situation, awful circumstances, lonely, persecuted, humiliated, life hanging in the balance. And yet he used that situation to glorify God and it became a Bethel to his soul. And he lived to tell the tale of living a victorious life. I wonder today, are you living in victory? Are our priorities right? Are we seeking first the kingdom of God? Are we walking in fellowship with him? Do we know our Savior, our Lord, intimately? I trust today that the Lord will enable us, those who name the name of Christ, to depart from iniquity, to be filled with the Spirit, to know what it is to pray, and to labour for the Master 
and to enter into that deep union and fellowship with him. I come to the garden alone. Why not spend a little bit of time just now seeking the face of your Saviour and your God? Thanks for joining us. May God bless you in the days that lie ahead. God bless you and see you next time.